I wonder why agencies don't invest in startups that are going to help the agency run better. Mm. They always invest in things that they think their clients would think are sexy. So they'll do, oh, we invested in this AI blockchain thing. Mm. But the agency doesn't require that. It's just fashionable. Yeah. So it makes it reflects well on them. And I guess that's down to your investment thesis. Are you doing this to make yourself look cooler to the outside world? Or are you doing stuff that you genuinely think, we need this, we need this, and our clients need this? Okay, hello and welcome to this edition of Behind the Screens with me, David Hart, my partner in crime, Mark McDermott. Hello. And we're joined this week by Matt Jukes, who is the Creative Director of Innovation at Chael, and also uh, an international artist, should be said, <laughs> and also worked for a pretty cool um, digital agency back in the day called Cogent. Well, that's where <laughs> I learned my trade. Yes, well, you <laughs> I know. Mean, if if you only know, we yeah. knew um, whatever happened to those guys. I know. I'm sure they're doing something really amazing. Mm. Um, just in case you didn't realise Cogent was... Um, I was going to show you that. Oh, my your artwork my, is, my um, is like international up artwork is up in on my, your walls. in my flat. That's awesome. So for the, so for the, for the, for the um, YouTube viewers and for those at home that. listening on, uh, <laughs> it's a picture of wow, it's pretty it's, cool. It's not the best picture I ever took, it's a, but it's, it's uh, a picture of some of Matt's artwork. I need to, beautiful. I need to, I need to invest. I yes. haven't got as much disposable income as Mark because I've got kids. Yeah, well, I, I'd say everybody needs to invest in my art. Yeah, <laughs> cool. Sorry, I was just about to take a sip there, and it all just went quiet. Pregnant pause. But what we're going to be talking about this uh, this episode is around uh, innovation and agencies, which is kind of relevant to what we did as ScreenCloud because we were part of RGA's incubator. So we'll talk about that a little bit. Um, but you just want to give us a little bit of an overview of, of what your role is within Chael and, and how innovation is, <laughs> and is kind of coming to the fore with yeah. what you're doing. Well, um, the, the really kind of interesting thing about um, like innovation is that all brands at the moment, is it's very much at the top of their, 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 their list of things which they need to do to be able to show, the, show that they are winning the awards and basically um, being interested and also relevant to, to their audience outside of just for sell this product. So this product, which you know is most of advertising, mm. but th there's this real interesting shift now into how how do we be innovative? How do we check? How do we change the world? Um, because because all these agencies, wh what they're trying to do is live up to a bigger brand purpose, and that bigger brand purpose is uh, is about changing the world, being different, standing out, mm. which sounds um, qu quite a lot like you know the, uh, the, the all all of the startup mentality. Do you think like what's happening is that like, you've got your big sort of brands who are saying at the board level, we need to be more innovative. Who are we going to talk to to become more innovative? And they just go, well, it, maybe our advertising agency because they're kind of creative guys. Is that? Yeah, yeah, I think that's it. I, I think there, that there is that, 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 that idea because, you know, our advertising agency is going to understand our brand and understand our purpose. And a lot of these big brands need an advertising agency to kind of justify why they want to be innovative mm. because, you know, there are some brands which don't necessarily need to be innovative. Yeah. But there, th but there is that kind of justification. So they do come to the, to, to to the agency, and quite regularly, the agency goes. Oh. Yeah, is the um, is innovation just like the replacement of the microsite or the flash game circa <laughs> two thousand and six, or the mobile app, or or um, like the Facebook app? Yeah, the Facebook app. Yeah, yeah. It, um, it is very much a trend. It is very much a trend. If you look at all of the Can Lion Awards this year, all of the big big hitting awards are the ones which are. Uh, innovative in some way, and I'm not going to say curing cancer, but uh, they are definitely trying to have that bigger kind of brand purpose to stand up outside of just a, hey, it's a lovely ad which made me feel something. Mm. It is it is all very much about creating some kind of connection with the user and being useful. But is the, I, I, I wonder if the innovation thing is being driven because they genuinely want to be innovative or because they're feeling the pressure from startups? I think it's. I think it is a little bit of both, but very much that pressure from startups, uh, because let's face it, um, all of the, the people doing the interesting work are startups, and and I am going to include all of your big kind of tech brands inside this, mm. because even though Google are a long way from being a startup, they still have that kind of mentality within them. Yeah. Mm. Um, so I, I I do think there is definitely um, that kind of talent drain as well. So, um, okay, if we want all of the good people, we need to be doing the good work. Right, mm. yeah. So with, uh, in our experience with ScreenCloud, so we became part of um, RGA's Ventures Incubator in London. 
And I think at the time they said to us, the reason we're doing this is because we want to be able to talk to our clients and say, you know, we've got our fingers on some of the kind of new innovative things that are, that are going on. And so I can see it kind of from the perspective of uh, an advertising agency. Um, and, and I guess from the startup's point of view, certainly what we were sold was this idea, okay, it's money, which, which mm-hmm. is always good when you're in a startup. Yeah. Um, it was access to clients. And then the third thing was access to services. Mm. And I, I'm guessing that's why advertising agencies think that they have an advantage perhaps over even app over VCs and that they have more of a network of access to clients yeah. and and they they understand they can at least provide some of the things that um, startups need you know in terms of the creative side yeah yeah Be- because I think that's what ad agencies do best is the um, the idea of um, like brand positioning and brand like strategy i.e why should we be d- uh, investing in this startup why should we b- even be in uh, be in the startup space um, that justification but then the creative idea to wrap around what are you going to do with this product? Yeah. Mm. Um, the, the, to, to me, I, th- I, I think there, are, there needs to be a whole lot more thought given to that because I think that there's a lot of agencies running out there at, at the moment just saying, I don't know what we're doing. Quick, let's buy it. Let's start, let's start investing in some of these startups. Mm. Mm. See, I think there's a bit of a conflict as well in that um, agencies generally, having run one myself, uh, are worried about how, pe- how billable people are, mm. right? And startups don't care about that, they care about growth. Yeah. And then you, so you have this thing, when anyone from the agency is working on your product as a startup, that's all time that they're not being billed. Mm. And however, kind of like, hey, yeah, we wanna do invest, invest, invest. Ultimately, the managing director of that regional office, let's say, mm. is gonna be going, yeah, but billable, billable, billable. And I can't turn around at the end of the month and, or the end of the quarter and say, yeah, and sorry we didn't make a profit this month, but we were, we're all working on these really cool startup ideas. It's just not gonna fly. Yeah. And I think, the, so I guess my question really is, do advertising agencies do a better job than VCs in terms of uh, in, investing in startups or mm. nurturing startups or giving startups the their first does, does the does the creative and the access to clients outweigh the benefits of a VC who's entirely focused on uh, growth the entirely focused on growth and entirely focused on building that business mm. um, I'm going to say that um, the I, I don't think there's a simple yes no answer to this because I'm gonna go no you're gonna go no. <laughs> <laughs> well um, I mean I, I suppose I was going to put, put position this in the um, obviously th- that 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 kind of gateway to 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 a large potential brand for you to be able mm. to work with should be invaluable. Yeah, that is if that advertising agency is being able to um, make sure all of the silos are connected and being able to pull you up and be able to um, say, oh. I've got this job with this person, you'd be perfect for it, perfect media mm. channel, et cetera. Mm. And I guess that's the problem. Is like with my experience, and again, I haven't worked in big agencies like you mm. have, but just observing them because we've worked with them is quite often, it's all, you, you get this idea of, hey, you're going to be working with this massive multi-international mm. thing and you're going to have all these brains all over the world. But actually, to, I mean, maybe, maybe I'm wrong, but to what extent are they actually helping each other out? Or to what extent is someone in New York going, someone says to them, oh, we really want to do something cool with digital signage. Yeah. And they go, oh, you know what? I heard that we own a digital signage company or we've got a mm-hmm. stake in one over in London. Let me hook you up. How often does that ever happen? How often within does that a, ever within happen a big organization? within a big organization? Um, the different agencies I've been in, I'm not going to lie, they do this to different degrees of uh, successfulness. Mm. Um, but uh, th- there are some agencies, like the one which I'm talking about, there's a whole, uh, th- there's a whole structure there of being able to make sure that everybody knows what all the different channels are doing so right. all the different okay. markets are doing and I just hit the microphone sorry about that uh, <laughs> we'll take that again um, so, so that's how passionate you feel about it is yeah exactly how passionate, <laughs> passionate I feel about this so I th- across the agency th- there, 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 there there is a team which is dedicated in informing everybody on what the different parts of the agency are doing and the, the different uh, the, 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 the different um, products I suppose which can be which can be actually productized in different markets so um, because I'm a large multinational um, agency well part of um, th- th- there th- there is literally um, weekly phone calls monthly f- like face to faces mm. where it's all about talking about the new and exciting things which you are doing 
So I've got two issues with agencies and startups. Mm -hmm. which I'm, <laughs> I'm going to be contrarian today. Mm -hmm. No, 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 but genuine, genuine issues. I think um, inevitably a startup that's going to take investment from an agency is going to be early stage, right? Mm -hmm. If you're a Series B or whatever, like that yeah. you're in growth, you, you, your agency's not going to do any help for no, you at all. Not unless they've got millions and millions to sink into They don't. That. Yeah. Yeah, no, nowhere near compete with the VC uh, no. part. So it's early stage. The problem is you're um, a creative director. You're working on your big client. You really, really want to deliver. Going to gamble it on an early stage startup as part of the uh, solution? Mm -hmm. I found that most people won't do that. I actually think ScreenCloud, for example, is only just about viable for being used on an, an RGA project, mm -hmm. right? Um, but they invested in us in 2017. Yeah. Mm. So we've had two years of well, genuinely nothing. Yeah. I mean, we've had chats, but nothing's come off. Mm. And, it's, and I, to be honest, I don't blame them because the product wasn't quite at the sort of stage because, I mean, they're dealing with massive, massive brands. Yeah. And, you know, th there's gambling to yeah. be done here. Will they really do a flagship store using our product when it's still a lot of it still to be developed? Mm -hmm. So that's my issue one, which is just that that just doesn't really work. Issue two, I think, is um, more about the culture of agencies. And again, I don't blame them because you know, we used to be in this one ourselves. What I found is that when an agency wants to work with a startup into a campaign or some kind of campaign mm -hmm. execution, you know, innovative or whatever, but still mm -hmm. campaign related, yeah. they've got to add their own value and twist. Mm -hmm. So they never, ever just take the features that you've built and just go, great, we'll work with that. It's always pushing the envelope, yeah. right? The problem is, that isn't how you design a roadmap. You don't push an envelope for a three-month campaign doing some wacky idea, mm. which probably 90% of your customers won't ever benefit from. Mm. But yeah, you've got this pressure to like, well, if we can't do that, and it's always like, oh yeah, we like what you've done, but we want to do X, right? And, and I, I get it, that's their yeah. value add, yeah. and that's the kind of people they are. But mm. that's actually a complete nightmare if you're a product manager at a startup. Yeah, because you have to remember the agency has come from from this uh, point of view of, we've got this big idea, mm. now how do we execute this idea? Yeah. How, how can we, sl what team can we slot into, into space to be able to do this? So is it really just, we want to use you as a resource? Exactly. That's, mm. that, and, and, and I suppose that that's, my, that, that that's the thing which I find interesting. Because if you look at it as purely a resource issue and a billable, non-billable issue, mm -hmm. uh, building an in-house team to be able to do that, you, you, you are, you're going to use them just for that project and then sack what do you do them? Yeah. Sack them off. Mm. Um, or, uh, or you employ them full time, then they kind of sit there for all the times when you're not doing that project, mm -hmm. which is most of the time. Mm -hmm. Or do you go out and find yourself a, a third party to invest in and then try and hit a square peg into a round hole? Mm. Yeah, well, that's literally what I think. Yeah. I, I, mm. and, and, and I think there's some value in it. Um, I think if you're say, a startup coming very much from a sort of science or engineering background, i.e. basically you don't really get brand or go to market, mm. then actually having agency advice there I think is really useful. If you have kind of done that before, either through agency background mm. or just by doing it again, again, you're, no, it's not to say it won't be useful. Or like it, Professional people who are good at their job can always contribute something. Mm. But in terms of like that, if you were to go back to David's question, is it that little tidbit of help, you know, mm. maybe a little bit more than that, versus, oh, this is the playbook for how you grow from 100 people to 200 people or 50 people to 100. Like, I mean, you really want, is it really a yes, no answer yeah, I mean, <laughs> in terms it, of value? There might be someone in the agency who can say, right, I, I totally understand SaaS growth and these are the metrics that you need to be focused on. But, but why would they? But why would they? Yeah, more likely they're going to be saying, hey, I've got a great idea for an app that you could do and it's going to look right. really sexy. Yeah. Which that's in, dangerous. In the early days, yeah, that's the, that's the last thing you... And you probably... They're not going to... With the greatest respect in the world, we've been thinking about this for, for years and years. They're probably not in, in the space of two weeks going to come up with anything that we haven't probably thought about before. They might yeah. do, mm. but the, the execution of it might be amazing. But yeah, as you say, is, is, is that the real value add that you need at that, in that early stage? There is a third problem, not, and then we'll get, get it more positive. But yeah. I'm, ju I'm just talking from experience. I yeah. mean, if people want to disagree, I'm, I have no problem with that. But mm. I, I can point my finger in a direction of experience here, and, and it, mm. you know, I'm not lying. The other one is the... Um, what's the right analogy for it? 
Well, basically, once you've used one execution on a campaign, can you really go and reuse it? That's a really good, good uh, quick question because I think the, the, there's a whole lot more productization now, which which is, which which is going on inside the production side. So, is it the is it going to be the same execution as you as you did last time? I'm going to say obviously not. You need mm. to make some kind of tweak and change yeah. and a build to that. But I, I, I do think that more and more there, that there is that um, instead of taking a big leap and then forgetting about it and trying to take another big leap, mm. there, there is very much a trend of uh, let's, just take, let's just take lots of little steps and yeah. tr- tr- try to keep moving this, this, mm. this campaign mm. forward. See, I, this is what I, I think is such a, a wasted opportunity. Or, but I might be completely wrong because I've been out of the game for a while and mm. we never really worked on stuff as big as this is what you're working yeah. on now when we work together. But like, you know, if you're doing this innovation work in something that's going to actually benefit the customer, I mean, that's yeah. ultimately what you want to yeah. do, right? Yeah, exactly. So it's a kind of, it's an extra execution on top of the product. It's a, yeah. it's a way of work, making this product more valuable to the person who ultimately yeah. is buying it. Yeah. Why can't that live on beyond the campaign and become part of the product? Like, why is it separate? Like yeah, that? why does it f- f- get... F- get forgotten about yeah. why does it get to the point where we've launched this thing and now let's forget about it yeah that's because i think most brands or at least large brands are all dedicated about the next latest product so it's the okay we've done that now now how do we move mm. on to the, the, how do we sell the next product which right. needs to be a little bit different from the last one or the last version which of is the this, product. i wonder i wonder like that's so interesting because like We'd say that we're building a product, right? But we're not launching new product after new product. Like we are relaunching the platform, but it's yeah. a complete upgrade of everything. Mm. But then everything we do subsequently is an iteration on improving and refining that product, not sort of stopping starting a new one. Like, mm, yeah. oh, that's done now. Let's do it. So is that is that because I think that's the way which brands are set up. So mm. so, so obviously the marketing department of a brand ha- have have been given this year's product is this one. So right. we need to sell mm-hmm. this one. We need to get our numbers in this product, which is probably just a upscale from last year's product. Yeah, yeah. But the, the, but the, the difference needs to be made, and uh, in the minds of the consumer, we need right. to convince you to go out and buy this 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 product again. Yeah. Because because what you're selling is a subscription service. Yep. Um, you just need to make sure that um, they keep, they, saying, they subscribe. keep saying subscribe, mm. not yeah. every year coming back and saying, "Oh, I want to buy the next version." Yeah. What's I that? want to buy the next yeah, version. Yeah. Wow. I, I mean, obviously, we're talking more about physical product here rather than mm. you know, software and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, but but I think the the, the, the same thing is, is is happening. And I mean, look at the way which um, Adobe have changed their mm. product from upgrading every year or two. <laughs> yeah, depending um, if you had a good year or not. Yeah, depending <laughs> if you had a good year or not, because you know it's an expensive piece of software. Yeah. Now it's a buy a, buy a subscription service. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So, uh, do you think then that really, uh, I mean, in terms of, the, so one of the things you wrote to us mm-hmm. beforehand and said, here's some examples of some innovation yeah. and that the, the awards at Cannes, they weren't, were any of those like startups or they're, they're all really for established brands, weren't they? So, is the innovation really within agency for established brands rather than well, startups? Per what, se? I, I, what I think it is, it is definitely for established brands because let's, let's face it, agencies are going to work with established brands. Yeah. Mm. But they, but, but what, all, but what, all those examples, we'll put links inside the podcast the notes. Show notes. Yeah, yeah. the show notes. Um, um, the, all, the, all, all, all of those examples were very much the agency kind of um, tr- trying to start some kind of business, start some kind okay. of um, like startup. Um, but was it a startup that could stand independently stand of the, the test brand? of time? I, d- I think it is providing a service which is secondary to to um, to um, like the band I- itself. Mm. So, f- for example, the um, the South American beer brand, which f- for Mardi Gras e- every year, what they do is they create basically a Airbnb. So, um, yes, it's pretty much what you think it is. <laughs> After you've got, uh, been celebrating Mardi Gras, you've drunk their beer. Uh, you obviously need to find a place to be able to r- relieve yourself, <laughs> and your beer becomes that passport to people's homes who will let you in to be able to 
Um, oh, cool. Go ahead. So, <laughs> so it, 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 it is a business which they've been rolling out over the years. Um, is, is it a sustainable business? Is it, is it a campaign? Is there any money to be made out of that? Is it a business itself? Or is it, th- or, or is it the platform which it has been built upon, mm-hmm. which you'd be able to th- uh, then take into another brand? Quite yeah. possibly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, you could take that into, but there's a lot of brands you could take that into as a sort of concept. Of, yeah. It's almost, uh, I don't know, what's the equivalent of carbon neutralizing urine? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> urine neutralizing. Yeah. <laughs> but, 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 but I'd also argue that the, the, the kind of key v- value for the brand isn't necessarily to do the innovation themselves or to be able to build mm, these yeah. things themselves because most agencies will always kind of struggle with that. But the, the real value of the collaboration between the agency and the startup, in my mind, is, from the agency point of view, is to get a different brain's trust. Because, let's face it, advertising people are very much in a white, middle-class male sort of mindset. Mm. Um, so to be able to pull that kind of uh, alternative thinking to help you be able to develop your idea. So if you are, as an agency, able to go to your client and say, I've got this, th- th- I've got this idea and a business model for you to be able to build upon. Mm. And I guess if, you're, uh, if you've already invested in, I mean, does your agency invest in startups as well? Is that uh, there is a small yeah. division investing in in in, in, in in like various startups, but this is relatively new, and mm. and, and it's also um, mm. going back to our previous point, not being very well communicated yeah. around. So I basically s- stumbled onto it by opening the wrong door. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. Those like crazy loud. I, I suppose. Why would you do it as an agency? I, part I, part of it might be just around having a portfolio and, and spreading that financial risk if you like because obviously if you've got a portfolio of things that have some sort of longevity and we hit a bit of a recession and, mm. and all that kind of stuff but it does seem that's quite a very long term view and actually the the, le- the the stake that that you're going to be able to invest is going to be small I don't think mm. I mean unless you are set up as as a proper investment arm you're only going to be able to invest I know. suppose it really comes down to like what are you doing it for I mean like we we self-invested in product that we used as an agency. I mean, we, we had a product, an early uh, cloud product called File Pipes. You remember File Pipes? Yeah, I remember File Pipes. Yeah. So it was, I mean, now it's you know, fairly commoditized, but this was in 2006 and seven, I think. Mm. Um, and it was allowing people to, to, to record via webcam or transcode video um, on the fly in the cloud, which, mm. you know, this is over a decade ago. And yeah, we... Yeah would pull that into our solutions to customers. And we use that across loads of customers. Mm-hmm. And that was a game changer. We won pitches for that because yeah. of that uh, exclusive innovation. And I wonder why agencies don't invest in startups that are going to help the agency run better. Mm. They always invest in things that they think their clients would think are sexy. So they'll do, oh, we invested in this AI blockchain thing. Mm. But the agency doesn't require that. It's just fashionable. Yeah. So it makes it reflects well on them. And I guess that's down to your investment thesis. Are you doing this to make yourself look cooler to the outside world? Or are you doing stuff that you genuinely think, we need this, we need this, and our clients need this? Mm. I think there's definitely a let's look cool. Because mm. let's face it, the, the, the agency model falls into um, two camps. One, um, the, the cash cow. Get, get the work through, get it done as quickly as possible, get it through the agency, yeah. and take the money. The other camp is let's win some kind of award. Yep. That. And that's where the kind of sexy element comes. That's right, where yeah. I, uh, I, as a creative director, I want to get somebody to c- show me something I haven't seen before. Not that I'm, uh, I, I, I am old and been kicking around the tracks yeah. for a while. I've seen a lot. So <laughs> that's the reason why I, I keep track on all the startups because, oh, those guys are thinking something interesting. Those guys are doing something un- unusual. Mm. How can I bring those guys in? How can I bring those guys in? Mm. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I probably will abandon you after the campaign. <laughs> um, yeah. Which, for, well, for, it gets them a bit of PR as well. I think so long as everyone knows what they're getting out of it, like, yeah. that's the most important. I suppose thing. The other thing, if if you do invest in lots of startup innovative type things, and then you just happen to stumble across Slack or something, mm. and then that's going to look pretty good, isn't it? Oh yeah, yeah, we we you know we understand. We've got a finger on the pulse of of new innovation. In fact, we were one of the early investors in Slack. Yeah, that that in itself is like, oh, you guys must be really. Yeah, I mean that opens up doors with clients. That that, that mm. opens up th- those conversations of the we know what we're doing. We we as an agency are associating ourselves with all of these kind of cool, profitable, good, big ideas. Mm. Um, are th- 
is that going to open up a, I mean, I, I think that, that they will only open doors. It won't actually win the client. Mm. I, 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 I think that the, the client is still looking for that kind of strategic creative advice from us and production becomes very much a secondary thing. Yeah. So if you were, if you, if you were listening now and you were a, uh, someone in, your, in, a, in a startup phase and very early, maybe even pre, pre-revenue stage mm. and you were thinking of uh, sort of working with an agency yeah. or seeing if you could get invested in by an agency yeah. or part of their incubator, what, I, what I would mean, your advice be? Or? What's my advice? I think it kind of falls into two camps of the, um, do you want to um, be invested in? And th- then, it, then it comes a question of how much money, how much cash flow, how much um, c- c- cash do you want? Or do you want to work with an agency mm. um, to be able to derail your, derail your, um, your um, like roadmap to be able to do a, a slightly different thing to whatever you are doing, which is the reason why the agency has probably um, like approached you. Mm. Um, for the, I, I suppose, the short-term game of of cash in your pocket, a bit of exposure and a bit of exposure, mm. and, and and also like the likelihood of you know, <coughs> win some kind of award or, yeah. to, to, I mean, if it's a good enough idea, w- win the award, then uh, you'll be able to, then sell your business on. Mm. I mean, there's definitely, a, I think there's potentially a danger, if you like, if you said, if you said, right, we're going to go and work with an agency. Although we will have to completely change our roadmap for six months. I think yeah. that can be, you know, one of the things that people often say is don't get seduced by one big client exactly. because you'll end up yeah. doing something that actually takes you off. And Especially if that big client only lasts three months. Three months, yeah. And yeah. you've spent three months working on something that yeah. actually... And there's so many you, that have yeah. been... Yeah. So there, there is that. But I also think um, there is something... I mean, in our experience, I think coming to RGA has been a broadly an overall a positive experience. Mm. Um, I, I'm not convinced... It actually quite delivered on we everything. We haven't worked with one of their clients. Yeah, though. it didn't mm. deliver on some of the promises, but I, I don't think it's been a, a but, terrible experience. Um, but do you think that is a comms uh, between you and the right people? I've spoken to a lot of people mm. internally. Um, I, they've tried. I mean, mm. I, like, they honestly have tried. Like, um, there was a luxury gym brand. They wanted to do a. Ha- they, they asked them to do a hackathon of something. They mm. wanted to use screens for that. Yeah. Um, there were several other attempts and none of them came off. Mm-hmm. And the, the problem really was, I think there was two problems really. One, that idea to how do we add our stamp? We can't just put that product in and go, ta-da, mm. hackathon's done, yep. we're using Screen Cloud because they've not added any value. Yep. And that, in the, that conflict just that never mm. felt that. Yep. So inevitably, oh yeah, we, we had that idea, but we actually went with something else which was completely bespoke. Oh, how unusual. Mm. Um, mm. Yeah. Um, so that that loop never mm. never really closed it yeah. off. Like that, that was always broken. Mm. Um, and I think, the, I think the comms is the main thing. I think, I think you know, I mean, that, so if I'm honest, I think the reason we took RGA was kind of almost on the reverse of looking cool. Mm. They're a cool brand. Yeah. Um, we're a very, very visual um, company. You know, mm-hmm. we put we put brand content on screens. Yeah. RJ investing actually is actually not bad for us in our image mm-hmm. because big brands will think, well, if they get if they're into you, then you must get it. Then mm-hmm. then maybe you're safe with our brand. Yeah. So that's one reason, mm-hmm. and it has helped. Um, I think to be honest, the other sort of maybe it wasn't <laughs> the main reason was they gave us. A really nice office to be mm-hmm. in for well, not gave us we paid, yeah. but we paid a low amount. It was yeah. a low, below rock market rate. Um, we got to use the facilities mm-hmm. here. It definitely elevated us with that. Yeah. Again, that wasn't something that really mm-hmm. we actually thought we'd be kicked out after the three months. Yeah. But they had room, and they said they liked having us yeah. around and, and others as well, not just us. Mm-hmm. Do you think that also opens up the um, those serendipitous conversations? Well, it did. So, so I I used to on a Wednesday morning. I used to I I'd get in early. Surprise mm-hmm. for me, but I do get in here pretty early on Wednesday morning because I teach, and then I come in, and I'm usually here about sort of eight fifteen. Yeah. Um, and I used to just sit down in the cafe downstairs mm-hmm. and I would just not put my earphones in and I would just I'd be on my laptop, have some like toast and stuff. Yeah. But I would chat to different people. And mm-hmm. um, actually the few people inside of RGA uh, that I really kind of got to know, it was through that, that those regular catch-ups and chats and mm-hmm. showing them something I was working on and things yeah. like that. It still came to nothing with their clients, but 
it has come to something with them. Mm. And actually some of those people have moved on and they've gone to more product oriented things. Yeah. And I think those connections are going to be valuable down the road. And, and I think there's, there's, there's great people that we've met. I just think that the actual sell that we will get you into our clients in the next couple of years, it's just, you can't force that. No. You know, and I don't blame them, but I do call the bullshit on it. Yeah. Because it's too early, you're too much of a risk, we don't know what's coming in the pipeline, mm -hmm. and the reality is once our creatives get onto this, they're gonna twist and turn your roadmap into, yeah. into something you can't really handle and deliver in the right time. Yeah. And as long as everyone, as everyone actually said that, then I think it's fine. Yeah, mm. yeah. I mean, let, let's face it, the agency's primary um, focus isn't on your roadmap. Of course it, not. Yeah, I mean th that's th that is yeah. th 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 that's going to keep. As point. an investor, it should be. As an investor, it should be. So, th so this is where the th th that kind of first model mm. of you being invested uh, in via the agency becomes a murky sort of territory. Of is it is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Well, mm. see, the thing is, I, I just listed some benefits, which I I genuinely believe benefits, and mm. I I would agree with David. I think it w this it was great to have RGA as mm. an investor. Those benefits I gave you will never be mentioned by RGA when they go out to, um, to, to market. I guess, yeah. I, one other, one other benefit, I guess, is the the people that we had that were actually working in ventures at the time. So Matt Webb and, and some of those, those guys yeah, yeah, were really exactly. useful. It was great connection. So, I mean, but they're not here anymore. But, mm. you know, but they, well, that, they that were... That's kind of what I was alluding to. Yeah. yeah. But the, the counsel that they gave us early on was useful. No, it was and, great, and, yeah. And mm. that kind of stuff. But yeah, the, when we first came in and it was like, you know, do you remember that? brilliant video we saw and we went well, we wanted those videos can mm, you make a video mm. like that for us and they're like no no, no that's you can, that's way yeah, too expensive you can have a landing page <laughs> <laughs> um which you know totally totally understandable but yeah, yeah there, i think there was probably a little bit of a mismatch between um some of those kind of value add stuff that yeah. you might i think all the intentions about. are right so mm. don't get me wrong i'm not kind of saying that it's uh, you know the wrong thing to do the intentions are right but the it's missing one final kind of piece to make it all come together, yeah. which and is just a little bit more honesty on all sides of where we're yeah. at. Oh, I, I, I'm all for more honesty inside the business world because let's face it, um, advertising is all about um, convincing you to do something which yeah. you wouldn't normally do. So I would imagine there was definitely a bit of that sort of pitch to you as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we kind of, I mean, we, we, I kind of knew that it would happen that way. Yeah. Just, uh, but you know, but also, it, it, but I also knew that, that they were a nice logo yeah. for us. Yeah. Mm. So I was kind of reverse mm. agencying the agency. Yeah, yeah. That said, I was gonna, because uh, I think we've been a little, well, I've been critical, obviously. Um, that's been my thing today, but, um, I was going to ask one last question. It's a bit off topic, mm. but obviously the startup world is um, is you know is kind of big flourishing thing. It's, it, it's being overly hyped, yep. way overly hyped. But it's there. It is. I actually think having agency experience and then coming into startup life is actually fantastic. Mm. Um, mainly because what it schools you in the most, well, one is having to think fast. Mm. Um, huge variety which yep. when you're at an early stage startup variety is coming mm -hmm. at you um and you have to balance multiple things at the same time but crucially also how to take the guardianship of someone else's brand and deliver something back to them and deliver something that because if you don't deliver what they want effectively what's mm -hmm. on on brief you won't get paid yeah now how many people in the startup world have ever had that kind of pressure because you're usually going for like thousands of customers mm -hmm. or you know so you don't have to but in agency you can't not succeed with a customer yeah otherwise yeah, that's true. you're you really come, screwed if you come in with a kind of arrogant view of like well my way or the highway then that's what you might mm -hmm. say we really under i've got a total really really clear vision on this product but i haven't spoken to any customers because i just know what's right but mm -hmm. actually you're right if it, within an agency world you can't you can't afford to do that. Because you have to listen. You'll fail very, very quickly. You yeah. have to listen and respond, but not necessarily just do what they do. You have to respond back and still do it right, still add your value. Yeah, and, and maybe even convince them that you've got the right idea. But Yeah, I mean, there is that justification of your existence. You need mm. to be able to add value. You need to be able to take to take whatever messaging which they, which they give you, structure that messaging, give it thought, and then to be able to provide the solution to that. Mm. So that, that, that there is, um, uh, and the experience of being in an agency means you're doing that for a different client every week. Yeah, uh, for a different for, for for a different set of um, set of purposes. So you're working across multiple brands, multiple products, 
course, which is very different to the startup world where mm. you're focused on the one, very much the one brand, the one product. Yeah, mm. but your customers are those. Ultimately, most, brand, most, most startups, B2B anyway, mm. they want to go on and be used by those great larger brands. Yeah. So getting that exposure to them and understanding how they work, how they operate, what, what they really want, mm. what they don't want, I just think, you know, now we are got, you know, it's taken a while, but now we've got to a point where we are now working strategically with big brands mm -hmm. using Screen Cloud. I now feel like I'm back in my old shoes again. I'm yeah. like, right, I, I, I'm reading the personas in the room. I'm knowing what they're looking to do. Mm -hmm. I'm knowing what they're worried about in terms of yeah. brand identity and, yeah. and what they're doing. Like that And it's, it's, it's like, yes, the agency taught me how to read this. Yeah. And, and to also understand the, um, uh, the way to be able to navigate yes. uh, navigate a job or to be able to carry your idea through all of the different ports of call you need True, to get yeah, through. through the stakeholders <laughs> through all yeah. the different stakeholders <laughs> the many many that, and, and to be able to make sure that everybody's coming along Pop with you Pop quiz biggest number of people you've ever had inside of a pitch uh, um, on the customer side on the customer side the biggest one I have done was about 80 80, oh, 80 people. Win. Yeah. I just, I'm still remembering our BBC one where that woman fell asleep on the front row. Oh, completely fell asleep. They woke up at the end and went, thanks, very good. Yeah. yeah. No, no one else one. next to her kind of mentioned made, it. Yeah, um, to it at all. Yeah, that was funny. Are we, we had a couple where we walked in once and there was like, it was a massive, it was like 18 people. Mm. That was huge. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so that, you want to see multi stakeholder. Yeah. I mean, yeah. 80 people. That's, that's 80 people. I still haven't worked out who so everybody was room, there. It was, the, it was the size of the room, and it was the first time which I ever presented to somebody who <laughs> had a full screen. So I stood in front of a massive um, like video screen, um, and everybody on, on the table had their own little version of it, just in case they couldn't see. <laughs> because from the back. Can you Say what you will, but agency life is yeah. tough. It is tough. It is tough. So we, we probably need to oh, start yeah, wrapping up. And stuff. But I just, I, I think there's quite a few th things that have come out. So if, again, to to summarise, if you were a startup agency, it sounds to me like, you know, definitely think about going to work for, or uh, well, not going to work, mm. but Working looking with. if there's an incubator or some kind of investment things, but probably go in with your eyes wide open. Mm. You're not going to get in in introduced to the CEO of Nike on day <laughs> one with your little kind of startup Neither idea. Neither would that no. be useful though. Yeah. No. Well, he's good. I mean, it would probably burn you out. Yeah, and they're yeah. probably not going to produce a, you know, an all singing, all dancing TV ad for you. But mm -hmm. there is going to be some value there. There are probably going to be some people on the ground that can that can help you. Otherwise, that would be a bit crazy just pulling all these people in and not having anyone then there to sort of help them. Um, but yeah, so it's kind of almost, you know, going with your eyes wide open and, you know, realise that actually there is a, brand there is a mark of credibility in having uh, an agency that's well known or, or respected also thinking that what you guys are doing is quite good i mm. think that's yeah yeah there's, there's no bad thing just 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 go in like knowing really what it what it is not what mm -hmm. it's being sold to i guess also the other thing would be if, if they're sort of saying well we're going to we want more equity because we're going to give you all these value adds mm. oh then, just push back on then that. you probably need to think about that <laughs> yeah. yeah i mean that becomes very much more of a more of a business decision rather than yeah. a yeah. creative collaboration and it, I, I think we've forgotten one thing it's the 40th episode. Oh, yeah. Ooh, Ooh, yes. 40th. <laughs> so I don't know what, what's 40 in like wedding anniversary terms. It's our. It's probably a. Something. It's probably a, 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 a mohair, jumper. mohair jumper. Ten. Mohair jumper. It's our yeah. mohair jumper <laughs> anniversary yeah. of behind the scenes. Yeah. Uh, screens, even. Yeah. Screens. <laughs> from us. So on brand. From us, SoundCloud. I, I get I brown. From, Sa <laughs> from SoundCloud. Everyone behind the scenes. Yeah. Uh, Did we turn on the microphone? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cool. Well, thank you so much, Matt. It's been really no, great so chatting much. and catching up again. And yeah. you know, all the after all these years, um, and uh, I will put links. Also, check out Matt's art because it is yeah, amazing. Definitely. Is it? We'll, we'll just say it because I mean, yeah, yeah. Matt um, art, uh, it? it is Matt Dukes dot inc. Uh, yeah, Matt uh, M A T T J U K E S dot inc i n k, or uh, just Matt find Jukes. me on um, on um, Instagram at uh, Matt Dukes. Hit me on my Insta. Yeah, slide into your DMs. I'm down with the kids. <laughs> and on really? that on that note, obviously, if you like the uh, podcast, please subscribe, hit the like. Um, oh, yeah, you know what to do. You know what to do. <laughs> Great. Cool. Well, thanks, thanks very much. And thank uh, you all. yeah, until next time. Bye. Bye.